Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Shake Sales. I'm Sujan Patel, the founder and CEO of Mailshake. I've got Troy Barter here, the founder of Sales Org, as well as the head of sales at Rocket Shipping. Troy, welcome. Thanks for having me, man. I want to talk today about scaling SaaS scale, uh, sales organization. I want to start from the very basics, hiring, building the team, metrics, what all the things, you know, I feel like people get wrong or like should be doing right from the ground up. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, and I know you've done, you've built, what, how many how many sales orgs have you built? I think three at least, right? Um, on the tech sales side, yeah, I'm, t- I'm technically on my fourth because Rocket Shipping also has a uh, a software offering. Um, so yeah, I've done it. Done it a few times. Yeah. Some that were like very like early stage and then some were had already IPO'd. So a little, little everything. Nice. So I want to go to like the basics. I feel like everybody gets this wrong where like they skip these steps. Yep. What are qualities and characteristics you look for in a sales rep? Forgive me, man. Not only did it cut out on the video, but on the audio as well. Ah, oh, geez. All right. I'll start over. Uh, I'll start with the question again. Yep. So I want to start with the basics. What are qualities and characteristics that you look for in, in, in sales reps? So it depends on the, the title for sure. Like if we're in a model where we're hiring sales development representatives and we then have account executives for SDR, uh, I, I was just talking about this. Um, I think that my method, uh, pretty much every other, whatever you want to call them, both sales leader, thought leader, whatever influencer, probably say I'm an idiot. It's worked really well for me though, is all that I'm really looking for. Um, you know, if I was going to pick three things, it's ability to have and maintain a positive attitude, uh, ability to maintain a student mentality and consistently learn and get yourself better. Um, and then consistency slash work ethic. You know, I used to just say work ethic, but it's really consistency. Can you consistently have that work ethic and maintain it, not just do it in spurts? But above all else, I'm looking for uh, for SDRs. Are, are, can I get you willing to want to run through a brick wall every day? And if the answer is yes, we're probably in good shape. If the answer is no, we're probably not going to hit target. So when I interview them, I it's probably a flip of what most people do when they interview. They probably say, well, I want to talk 20% of the time and I want them, the, the, the person I'm interviewing to talk for probably 80% of the time. And I do the opposite when it comes to SDRs. And the reason why is I'm looking them in the eyes the whole time. And yeah, I'm telling them the, the good the, and the bad, maybe not the super ugly, but I'm, I'm definitely giving them a candid idea of everything. But I'm going to paint the picture of where I'm looking to take the, the, the company and where I'm looking to take the sales org and where I see this role fitting in there and what the opportunity is and where it can go. And what I'm looking for is to see whether or not I'm getting them hyped up on any level. Am I getting them excited? And if the answer is no, then they're probably not the right person for me to work with. They probably still could do well. But from my method is like, if I can't get you motivated and if I can't get you hyped up about the big picture in the opening interview, I'm probably not going to be able to do it at all. And you're probably not somebody that would get motivated based on the way that we do things. And if that's not going to work at the SDR level, then there's a pretty high chance that they're probably not going to have success. And that's all I actually care about. The, the, like, uh, if they have experience, that's great. If they don't, I don't really care though. If they can talk and I think that they can listen and I think that I can get them motivated, I can teach them the rest, but it's very hard to teach someone that like gets excited and gets motivated and really wants to do this. And sales wasn't their plan B. They're ready to turn it into their plan A. And that's really what I'm looking for from, from an SDR perspective. And generally, if they have those qualities, I can teach them a lot of the other things that might make them a great AE down the road. Because in a perfect world, I never externally interview an AE. They're getting promoted from the SDR level because they probably cost a little bit less. Also, I already know that they know the product. They know our prospects. They know our process. I know that they're good culture fit. I know all of yep. that stuff ahead of time. I'll teach you the rest and we'll move you up. And it also shows that the opportunity that I presented to them in the interview is valid because now here they are, they're moving up and we're doing that internally and not externally whenever we can. So that's you know probably a, a longer version, but I'm, I'm really just looking for people that are ready to run through a wall. I'm looking for people that treat this like it's a profession, not a job, which you don't always get with salespeople. I love it. Yeah, I think they, I think when I hear this is like you're looking for things that are core to their personality or the the things you can't train or yep. our hunger, right? Yep. Ambition. 
you can train somebody to sell or the script or objection handling, but like waking up in the morning, going through that brick wall, excitement, hunger, that that's not, it's probably trainable, but that requires a lot of reprogramming. I want to, I want to touch point on, on one thing you talked early on about consistency. How the heck do you like maintain consistency or foster like this, like culture of consistency or. So it's having a repeatable process for sure. So you better be staged and you better know what you're looking for at every stage. You know, what's your goal at this point of the sales process and where are you looking to go and make sure that you don't skip steps or anything like that. And you've identified what works in a repeatable way. A lot of the best salespeople that you'll ever meet, you know, at least half of them would probably, you know, you ask them what made them successful. And they're like, man, I just get out there and grind. It's like, no, no, you don't. You, you, you do that. But also on top of that, there's a million other repeatable elements to your process that you don't even realize that you're doing. And guess what? You're not the first person to do it. They've been doing it for hundreds of years and you didn't even know. Um, and it's being able to recognize those things. Um, from a consistency perspective also, it's, it, it is like, it's the difference between like inspiration and motivation, right? Like, are you, are, are you in, internally and intrinsically motivated um, and you have a why and you, you know, you're, you're constantly pushing towards it every day. And also like, do you see, or do you have the ability of seeing the bigger picture of, of where this is and what your, your end goal is. And you're able to set goals in between that are going to get you there where it feels like what you're looking for is like within arm's reach at all times. Um, I do an exercise on it, um, run this meeting. Jed's definitely heard it, ran it when he was an SDR for me, um, where it's, uh, let's just say, this is a good one for SDRs that are cold calling. Um, you know, let's say that your, uh, your sales manager comes into the office with a briefcase. They sit the briefcase down, they open it up. And there's a hundred grand in there. And they say, any of y'all, it can be more than one. Whoever breaks their booking record today gets, gets a hundred grand. You, you get $100,000 if you can break your booking. So imagine that that happened and now close your eyes and think to yourself, what would you do differently for the rest of the day today that you probably wouldn't have done if they didn't come in with that briefcase? And the people that have success, the, the highest success at the SDR level and at the AE level, that's how they view every one of their days, even though it might take them a year to get to that 100 grand. Every day they know if I do this today, if I exhaust it, I do all of these things, then it will lead me to getting that money. So they can see their big picture goals like they're within arm's reach. And it's a good exercise. Every time that I've ever ran it, people break their record. Not all of them, but some of them do because they, they, they get in their head. They're like, oh, why, why am I not doing that? If, mm-hmm. I, if I ever want to get to where I want to go, I got to start thinking that way. And then some of them will try it. And, and sure enough, they, they'll, they'll break, break the record. But I think that when it comes to consistency, like that's kind of the mindset that you need to have, not even all the time, but most of the time. Everyone slips up. That's normal. People are human beings. But you always can, can go back to that. And, and, and it doesn't really get fully shaken out of your system. Love it. Love it. I think the way I heard this is like you kind of you show somebody the goal. And then, you know, really there's two or three steps might be between where they're at today and the goal. And yeah. it's like, well, I can do these three things to get that money. Like, hell yeah, it's easy. Right. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I think I've seen Jed on his, uh, on some of the sales meetings kind of incorporate some of this, uh, some of this uh, style of management. So that's awesome. Yeah. Speaking of management, what can sales leaders do? to help train and motivate their teams? Like what are, you know, it, what are you doing? What do you recommend? Well, it's kind of the same thing that they expect of their salespeople is that you better have done a good discovery and the better discovery that you do, the better that you're going to be able to get what you want. Um, so do you really know them? Have you got to know them? Have you, you know, I, I don't, I haven't started to lead somebody until they're willing to tell me something that is a negative. Um, uh, and, and also it, it might even risk making them look bad if they were to say it to their manager. And once they're willing to be candid with me about those things and I can get them to do that long-term, I know I, I'm, I, I probably can, can either turn this person around or I can make them better than they even are. Um, the, the, the best way of doing that, but it's tough nowadays because everyone's remote for the most part, managing remote is you meet them outside of the office. You know, you, when I used to go door to door, I used to say you build your team in blue jeans. 
In other words, you don't do it in the office, you do it out of the office. You don't even have to be having a drink, but maybe at dinner or something like that, you know, and you kind of start to ask them about their life and, you know, kind of like, you know, where they are, where they want to be, you know, who are the people that are important to them in their life, their passions, like the more that you really get to know them, the more that, you know, because that hundred grand, that doesn't always work. And the reason why is not everyone is money motivated. Money is, you know, you, just having the money doesn't mean anything. What are you going to do with it? Why do you want it? What does that do for your life? It's the same things that you would do when you're selling a prospect. You don't just show them a part of your system or a part of the platform. You got to, you got to then say, what would this do for your business? What would happen if you didn't apply this to your business? You know, you, you, so the same things that you learned as a salesperson, you can apply in management. And, you know, outside of that, it's just remembering when you came up as a salesperson and all of the things that you hated out of your bosses. And sometimes there are things that, and, and trying to avoid those things, or at the very least explain why you have to do it. You know, so at, at Rocket, we're now, they didn't really have any staging or it was very rudimentary staging. So now I'm staging everything out. I could, they couldn't go into HubSpot and tell you how many meetings somebody had booked for the month. It wasn't in there yet. They just, that wasn't what they were tracking on. And it's like, we, we have to do that because I, 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 which means that there's a lot of stuff you need to enter into the CRM, but I didn't just tell them, Hey, you got to do this now. It's like, here's why, you know, and you really explain it to them. And it's like, this will make you better, but also it'll allow us to hire better. There's a million different things where if we don't do this, we could be in trouble because we can't identify negative trends or positive. We have mm -hmm. to have that stuff in there for us to be able to play money ball. And if you're not playing money ball in sales, you're making a pretty huge mistake in 2023. Like this is not 20 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, it's so critical. I think the, like, when you're a sales rep in your day to day, you're just on the grind and it's so easy to like, oh, I don't want to put all this notes in. I don't want to put the state, I don't mm -hmm. want to do go back and clean up the things. Nope. Right. Um, but you know, those are, those things are important. So you get the right metrics and, and really I want to, you know, the last thing I want to dig into is really the metrics and, and what, you know, when, when, when building a massive sales org or massive company, what, in your mind are the most important metrics or are there specific metrics that every sales org should, org should look at? It's kind of funny because you don't, from a, like a, you know, sound like Gary V on the, on the macro, from the, on the macro mm -hmm. side of things, like it's like, if you're talking about top of funnel, it's your stick rate. Um, it's your amount, the amount of bookings in your stick rate. Right. And then maybe you could go a little bit further and be like, all right, out of the ones that said, how many of them actually sold? Because you might have an SDR that's begging the AE to qualify the meetings and they're actually not really putting up anything that's really kind of worth worth doing or they're not putting up enough of it. Um, but I think it changes in every sales org because that's why uh, sale, like staging for uh, you know the sales process um, isn't off the rack. You have to tailor mm -hmm. it for every company. You know, so you have to look at, all right, what are all the stages? And the way that I stage personally is like it, from from one action or from one event to the next, can things get stuck? And if the answer is mm -hmm. yes, then it needs a stage. The answer is no, then it might not, because I need to be able to see when they get stuck and be able to identify it. And I need to be able to like see conversion rates across the board for for all of the reps on on everything. You know, yeah. so like an example um, at, at Rocket that like it would not work everywhere is you got to send out, you could call it a credit app, right? Or whatever. You send it out and this is where some deals go to die. People ghost, people look at it and it's like, well, wait a minute. All right, cool. So what can we do here? Uh, like mm -hmm. on, on these, on these apps, uh, like, do we need all this information or do we only need part of it? All right. We're sending out a PDF. Can we, did, did, can we make this digital? You know, like we're me and Jeff, we're at, 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 uh, at PandaDoc, uh, you know, and then, all right, we're sending it out and we're waiting. Can we make this into a call where we can get it back and everything like that? So it's really hard to mm -hmm. say what's the specific conversion rate. The big yeah. thing is you need to know what they all are and then you can identify yeah. based on where you yeah. think they can go, where they currently are, and then where the bottom and the top is. And then based on those things, that's kind of how you can react and say, all right, out of everything in my process, this is the worst one that we're at right now as a team, but someone showing that we could be better, let's repeat it. Yeah, that makes sense completely. So the metrics might be individualized to, or the things to do might be individualized to the company. But moving through the stages, regardless, you're good. Once you start to track that and measure that, you'll find the weaknesses, right? And, you know, like I remember when we first started our outbound team at Mailshake, the weakness was literally just getting demos, right? And we just getting rejected. 
We yep. fixed that. And then the problem was like the last mile close, um, getting approval or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, inbound was the biggest problem was like the no show rate. And so like you figure out all these things, but you really don't know until you actually start to measure. A hundred percent. And it's, it's one of the oldest phrases where it's like, you know, a light bulb can like light up the whole room, but a focus laser can cut through steel. So if you don't have your KPIs and you're just trying to guess, it's like looking at a car from the outside that isn't making any noise, but can't run. And you're just guessing why it might be versus yeah. actually really getting in there and being like, oh no, this is obvious. It's the, you know, alternator, uh -huh. you know? And, and yeah. if you can't do that, then you're wasting unlimited bandwidth playing the guessing game until you get right and you're blindfolded while you're doing it you know it, that, that's why staging is so important to me I, I think it's it's the largest thing also with your reps it's daunting if it's not staged because they're looking at it like it's like you know trying to jump up a 30-foot wall because they don't see that on the other side of the wall there's stairs no one's worried about going up 30 feet worth of stairs because you're not worried about the last stair you're worried about the one that's in front of you and that's yeah. all that you should be worried about so when they're like man I'm not hitting my target. It's like, yeah, because you're worried about the target. Worry about the yeah. dial, the, the next dial that you're going to make. And then once yeah. you get them on the line, worry about getting past the gatekeeper, getting to the DM, then worry about all those things. But you're worried about winning the Super Bowl and you're in the preseason. Like you got to be worried. It's one game at a time, man. You know, it, that, I think that's a big part of staging that people don't talk about is that's really important is like it, it, in theory. It, and if you practice it the right way, it's going to help the, the salesperson identify where they're at and what they need to do. And mm -hmm. it's a lot less intimidating, the sales process, particularly if it's a long one, if you have it staged the right way. Love it. Troy, thanks so much for jumping on. This was very valuable. I'm going to go look through. I, I'm, I'm, I'm jacked. I'm going to go look through our stages and so go find some weaknesses and areas we can improve. Uh, for, for those who want to learn more, contact you afterwards. Where can people find you? Um, pretty much everything. Social media is uh Troy Barter sales. So TikTok, Instagram, don't worry about Instagram. It's just reposted TikToks and they're all TikTok, Troy Barter sales. Connect with me on LinkedIn. It's just Troy Barter. I accept all LinkedIn connections. If you have a question about anything that we covered or anything in sales in general, hit me up. I always try to reply fast. Love it. And we'll link to some of those things on the show notes. Awesome, Troy. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Richard.